we played up in Canada, and if I didn't pitch every day, they didn't want the ball club. And uh, that's how I started. Once the pitching every day, I pitched in 165 ball games in a row because if I didn't pitch, they didn't want the they didn't want the club in town, let alone there. <laughs> and so I guess all that uh, got me up the hill to Cooperstown. Satchel Paige was arguably the best pitcher ever to throw a baseball. He started out his pitching back when baseball, like all of America, was highly segregated and he was playing in what was known as the Negro Leagues. This guy won 2,000 games, pitched in 2,500 games. He pitched what he said were 50 no-hitters, 250 shutouts, and there's all kinds of evidence that this guy may have been the greatest guy ever to step on a pitcher's mound. But what really made him stand out was that he was the guy who brought to the attention of cynical white reporters and a racist white dominated country. He brought to their attention the segregated world of Negro baseball in a way that eventually led to that world being integrated. In 1947, something momentous happened. Jackie Robinson took the field for the Brooklyn Dodgers and integrated the game of baseball. Satchel was in many ways the natural choice to be the first rather than Jackie Robinson to break the color barrier and that in part is why Branch Rickey picked Jackie Robinson. He understood that Satchel was enough of a star in his own right. Satchel knew his star power and he would have insisted on more money than Jackie was earning in the early days. Satchel had a reputation for being a real character. To a teetotaling guy like Branch Rickey, the straight-laced Jackie Robinson was much more appealing. So it was not until 1948, a year after Jackie was signed, that Satchel finally got his shot that he'd been waiting for for more than 20 years. Coming in as a rookie at the age of 42, Satchel play Page helped lead the Cleveland Indians to a World Series. Satchel was an extraordinary character and he lived life large. He had an airplane in his early years in the major leagues that had Satchel Paige written across the side of the airplane. He was also a star with women. He had an extraordinary self-confidence bordering on arrogance and he had an extraordinary ability to draw women as his sports star, as his sex symbol, and as somebody who was open to their overtures even when he happened to be married. He was stubborn, he was egotistical, but this book tries to look at the picture, what was good about Satchel Paige, what was difficult about Satchel Paige, and come up with a, a portrait of a baseball player and more importantly of a man that I think was one of the most significant people in American history in terms of not just the history of sports but the history of race relations in America and the history of triumphing over this horrible system of Jim Crow segregation. And he ended up in 1965 pitching three innings where he was brought back as a publicity stunt at the age of 59 by the owner of the Kansas City Athletics. What they didn't realize was that Satchel had the extraordinary resilience to pitch three shutout innings against the Boston Red Sox where the only guy who got a hit was the famous Carl Yastrzemski Everybody else he blew away, and after he got off the field after those three innings, fans stood up, it was a night game, they flicked their matches, they flicked their cigarette lighters, and it was the perfect tribute to this guy who seemed like he was never going to die as a player, and he milked the crowd and gave the crowd just what they wanted. <laughs>